Hey there, it's Dr. Justin Marcajani. Today's video is going to be on how to assess gut inflammation. We're going to dive in to test signs and symptoms and what you can do about it. Before we dive in, click that thumbs up button. Give me a thumbs up. Also hit that bell so you get notifications of future content coming your way and love to have your comments and your ideas below in the comment section. All right, so let's dive in. So signs and symptoms, what are some signs and symptoms of gut inflammation? So if we're having bloating or any digestive issues, diarrhea, faster motility, diarrhea, slower motility, constipation, any type of irritation at all, these are like kind of common sense kind of symptoms that there could be some inflammation happening. Now, a lot of gut inflammation can reside in mood issues and brain fog. So if you're having chronic brain fog, or chronic mood issues is a good chance there's a gut component, a gut inflammation component. Inflammation in the gut equals inflammation in the brain, leaky gut that crosses the blood brain barrier as well that activates the microglial cells in the brain which can create cognitive issues and brain fog. So signs and symptoms, your typical gut issues, bloating, gas, constipation, pain in general, acid reflux, but then the cognitive issues, the brain fog, and the mood issues. Now, lab tests, we can assess gut function on labs. So calprotectin is like the CRP or the C-reactive protein for the gut. Interleukins and cytokines make their way and white blood cells will produce this protein, calprotectin, in response to inflammation being in the environment. Whether that's inflammation from food, from infections, or just poor digestion in general, calprotectin will increase with inflammation. We'll also see the same kind of protein with lactoferrin also go up with inflammation as well. We may even see zonulin also go up. Zonulin is this protein that increases with gut permeability. So when we have inflammation, whether it's food, infection, poor digestion, zonulin goes up, which is a good sign that zipper of that tight junction, those gut perme that gut permeable barrier opens up and unzips just like you're unzipping your shirt or your jacket and that allows undigested food and bacteria particles to get into the bloodstream, which can increase in immune response. So one of the other markers we may see is IgA. And that's immunoglobulin A. That can go up with increased immune stress. The immune system can increase, it's attacking food, it's attacking other critters, and IgA may go up. It's not quite as good as the other markers, but it's a good marker that there's some kind of other gut or that immune mucosal barrier is stressing out to try to attack some kind of invader. So now we have to look at the other underlying issues here. So when we have chronic gut issues or infections, that can drive inflammation. When we have chronic gut stress, that can activate our sympathetic nervous system and that can decrease HCL and enzyme and digestive secretions so it's harder to break down our food, right? The more poor our digestion is, the more that food putrefies, it ferments, it rancidifies, and it can create stress, essentially rot inside your intestines. So having good digestive secretions via HCL and enzymes and bile salts is important. Gut infections can have a major impact through activating that fight or flight sympathetic nervous system response, and then also the poor digestive secretions being HCL, being enzymes, being bile, being, uh, bile salts and such. If we don't have enough of those, that can just generally drive inflammation just because that food's just sitting there. It's rotting, right? So if you're having any symptoms at all or the atypical symptoms, which are going to be mood, brain fog, these are going to be real common symptoms outside of your typical ones, right? I see these all the time. People have gut issues and they don't even know it. Then you wanna dive in, click below, schedule a consult with myself or my colleagues. We could dive in. We may need to look at the gut, look at different infections, see how your natural anti-inflammatory reserves are doing, see how you're breaking down your foods. It's important. If you wanna to get to the root cause, you have gotta look at the underlying root stressors in the gut could be it. And inflammation in your gut is more than likely present. All right, this is Dr. J signing off. Hit that thumbs up button. I really appreciate it. Comments below and look forward to connecting with y'all soon. You guys take care. Bye now.